So the Russians are losing. And I know that that sounds almost improbable when you look at the size of Russia to Ukraine, but this piece of information here and that piece there, it paints a picture that when you put it all together, the Russians are losing. And it's it's just, it's really amazing. So if you stay with me for 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to lay out my case. Okay, we're going to start here with the British Ministry of Defense, the owner of the Wagner Group, private military company, I can't pronounce his name, Prig Zin, uh, stated on October 23rd that Wagner forces were making advances of 200, 100 to 200 meters per day, which he claimed was normal in modern warfare. Now, let's compare that. According to mil their military doctrine, Russian forces plan to advance 30 kilometers or more per day in, its, in most conditions. In February, Russian forces plan to take 1,000 kilometers. That's for the month. And so what does that mean? 1,000 kilometers, that means uh, 1,000 divided by 30 or so is going to be 33 kilometers per day. In February, Russian forces plan to make that 33 per day. In September, Ukrainian forces achieved over 20 kilometers per day. So it's actually going the other direction on the ground. Now, Prigozhin um, <clears throat> has abandoned any pretense that he's not associated with the Wa Wagner. Uh, and they used to be this like shadowy group that they denied that, that exists. Uh, but he's come out, he's trying to burnish credibility within the Russian national security system. Okay, so let's turn our attention to what's going on on the ground. If we look on the ground, we're going to first look at Bakhmud. They've been trying to get Bakhmud for the longest time. This is a city that would uh, would have encircled previously, but it's that's off the table now. But they just keep pounding away at Bakhmud. Now, this is the distance to uh, from about a month ago. The distance was about 6.54 kilometers from the closest point of Russian, um, how close the Russian lines were to Bakhmud. A month later, it looks like this not much has changed. I mean, a month of actual hard fighting and you go from this to that. I mean, they have moved the line up a little bit, but not much. The Russians have made some advance, but the Ukrainians are really holding the ground. Now, the Ukrainians are really taking ground. This is uh, the northern offensive, in, uh, like here is Kharkiv, and they pushed all the way back through here. Now, this is a month ago. And now look and look at this pocket right in here, particularly. Okay, it'll disappear. The Ukrainians are the ones who are advancing. Look at that. So it went from this to that. I mean, that's pretty significant as well. Now let's look down in Herzon. In Herzon, this was almost completely captured. The green is where you see Ukrainian forces. And a month later, this is 10 1. Let's look at a month later. And you see all this has been captured. Now, <clears throat> Some commentators are saying the Ukrainians don't actually want to take all this t territory just yet because what they want to do is make it hard for the the Russians to have to figure out, do I defend and send people across this line and defend this, or do we fall back to a more defensible position across the river? I don't know about the theory. That I mean, that may or may not be the case, but I can tell you that they have taken a lot of ground here and they've taken a lot of ground up here. Okay, let's look at this. This is uh, Radio Free Europe. Fresh drone attacks. So the first thing is, on the ground, the Ukrainians are gaining ground. The Russians are not. Next. Um, so in the last month or so, we've had three weeks or so of nothing but nonstop missiles raining down on Ukraine. And you would think, man, they're just getting pounded. They're getting, you know, just hammered. Well, they are, but they're learning. And this is what happens in warfare. You learn and you grow over time. And so 12 out of 13 loitering munitions were destroyed by the Ukrainian anti-aircraft defense in the eastern and central regions, they said yesterday, or this was today's uh, news. So loitering is uh, uh, UAVs, uh, drones. And so they're learning how to conduct solid uh, anti-aircraft um, artillery, and they're able to shoot down things in a way that they weren't able to do before. On top of that, they're getting stronger, not just because they are learning, but because they're also getting provided. So they're about to have National Advanced Surface to Air Missiles, NASAMs. Uh, they're about to have a bunch provided. They've had uh, the German system, which has worked remarkably well, has gone into action. So they're getting better and stronger at shooting these things down. Now, what's, what's really interesting <coughs> is that <coughs> they shouldn't have had to worry about this because 
they, they with the the Minsk uh, sorry the uh, Budapest Memorandum in 1994 or so they gave up their nuclear weapons and the the guarantors were the United States the UK and Russia to guarantee their borders from that point forward so Zelensky admitted here we in Ukraine have not built a strong security system for 30 years because we did not expect such aggressive a steps from them this was the biggest mistake of our country so they trusted in the uh, these legal documents that said that the U.S., U.K., and Russia would guarantee their borders. Well, Russia's the aggressor here, so that's why we're having the problems that we had. We didn't think we needed the military, but apparently they did. Okay, here's the Guardian, the grain deal. So that's the next. This is the next step. The grain deal. Uh, you turn there. Uh, so a few days ago, after uh, Sevastopol was hit, uh, Russia said we're pulling out of the grain deal, and the reason to pull out of the grain deal was a laughable. Well, we can't protect the ships. Protect them from who? You're the only one who would be firing on them. But what happened was now they've reversed themselves. Why did they reverse themselves? Here's another fundamental weakness. And I, I'm telling you, this is why they are losing. This is why uh, I'm, I'm making the case that they're losing. Putin backed down, faced with blocking ships carrying grain from Ukraine, or tacitly admitting that his threats to do so had been a bluff, the Kremlin leader opted not to rekindle a global food crisis. Okay, what happened? Once Russia finally suspended the deal, it quickly became clear that Moscow had no plan. Okay, and they, they do this a lot. They don't have a plan. Jake Bro did this great job yesterday talking about the difference between <coughs> the difference between uh, the Turkish and the Russian. And Ukraine has no navy to speak of. Uh, but this is the Turkish fleet in the Black Sea. You see, the Turkish fleet is, uh, Turkey, the Black Sea goes right through Turkey. And so Turkey is the regional power player there. Yes, Russia has a larger navy, but they have to go through Turkey to get there. So Turkey is escorting these ships, and we don't really need to worry about what Russia will or won't do. And so they back down. So that's another reason that Russia's losing. They can't sustain their bluffs. Here's another thing. Russia in Russian invaders install terror methods of censorship in occupied Zaporizhia Oblast. Well, what's going on here? In Zaporizhia, the invaders have announced that they will be checking people's telephones in search of subscriptions to Ukrainian telegram channels and other social media. They cite Russian leader Vladimir Putin's decree on martial law as justification for purportedly unnecessary censorship. Okay, so why are they doing it? I thought, according to TASS at least, didn't the Zaporizhia region, uh, didn't they vote by an overwhelming 90 plus percent, 93.11 percent of the vote of the residents of Zaporizhia voted, we want to be with Russia, didn't they? Well, that's what they said. But if they're worried about it, they're worried about it for a reason. The Russians have examined telephones and abducted and arrested people for Ukrainian flags, songs, pro-Ukrainian sentiments since Russia first invaded Crimea and Donbass in 2014. So that's what's going on there. And it's actually really shocking. You don't control the people group. You, you, ha you have to clamp down because they don't want you. They would push you out if they can. Another reason to show that they are losing. Okay, U.S. accuses North Korea of covertly shipping artillery shells to Russia. What? What does that mean? Russia, for years, has been the big brother, and North Korea, like the little brother, like, okay, we know you're crazy, but we're going to be... But they're going hat in hand, we need your missiles, because they've fired way too many of them. By the way, Jake Bro made another great point the other day. This is Jake Bro, and if you don't watch him, you ought to. That this... They're, they're firing these rockets on the, the cities behind the front, front lines, which is a tacit admission that they can't actually fire it on the, their opponents in the field and win. So, I mean, that's remarkable. So, okay. Um, so he's gone to North Korea to get these ballistic missiles. It's a significant number of artillery shells. Uh, North Korea is trying to make it appear as though they're being sent to other countries in the Middle East. So they're rooting it somewhere else and then rooting it back to Russia in order to make it look like they're not really arming Russia. Okay, another article with the same thing. John Kirby is well aware of this. We're not talking about dozens here. It's a significant number of artillery shells, Kirby said. This is not a sign or... 
This is a sign not only of the degree to which North Korea is willing to continue to bolster support of Russia, but a sign of Russia's own defense articles, shortages, and needs. They're losing. They're running out of this material, and they have to go to Iran. They have to go to North Korea in order to get it or try to get Belarus to play their game. Okay, I'm only going to spend a little bit of time with fun with Russian state media, but here we go. So one article here, Russian Defense Minister Shogu, the main goal of the West is to destroy Russia. Now this is a perennial favorite in Russian propaganda that the West is just out to get us, but they keep saying it. This is Sergei Shogu. He's the head of the military, and he's really kind of inept. Uh, but he says this, Russia remains the main goal of the destructive efforts of the West. The West aims to destroy Russian economy, military potential, and deprive the country of a possibility to run independent policies. Well, we're fine with your independent policies. We're not fine with your overrunning Ukraine and then taking away their independence. So that's the issue. And nobody was really trying to stop you from doing anything before you invaded in February. So let's let's call a spade a spade. According to the minister, the current situation is beneficial primarily to the United States. Remember, Putin called the United States the empire of lies. Washington is trying to trying to maintain global leadership and weaken other states as much as possible, including its allies. Now, he's saying that for a reason. This is part of their propaganda message. And he's saying that because he wants to break the West apart. If he can split the West, split Europe and the U.S. off from supporting Ukraine, they have a chance of winning. Without that, Ukraine will prevail. NATO has increased military presence in Eastern and Central Europe 2.5 times since February 2022. They weren't thinking about it before then. Finland and Sweden joined NATO. They weren't interested in joining NATO before you invaded Ukraine. So there's a cause and effect, and they're forgetting the cause and just looking at the effect. Against this background, Russia and Belarus started forming joint defense space. Oh, the, the Russians want to pull Belarus in so badly. And the Belarusians are, are smartly trying to resist that and trying to help without actually getting entangled. Ukraine resorts to prohibited methods of warfare. Kiev arranges terrorist attacks and organizes contract killings and shells civilians with heavy weapons. What? This is all the things that Russia is doing and they call their enemy the things that they're doing. And if you haven't watched this other episode about propaganda that I did yesterday, you'll hear all about it in this episode. So please watch it. We are aware of Kiev's attempts to build a dirty nuclear bomb. Again, it's like the, the killer mosquitoes or the dirty bomb or the bio labs. It's all propaganda. Watch this episode on propaganda. Okay, that's all that I have today. Thank you for your time. I'll be back tomorrow.